Hey guys, I wanted to make a quick video where we talked about how you can work out a problem by hand and show an example of how you do a calculation and then use a spreadsheet to do a bunch of those calculations together and how you can take both the handwritten part and the Excel part and combine that into a single PDF that is easy to grade. Okay, so this is basically what I want you to do on the homework. Uh, I looked at the first homework that some students had done and uh, it seemed like that, it's, that you needed some instruction here. So I'm trying to make this video to help you understand how to do the homework. So let's imagine that this is the uh, kind of background information about the problem we're going to solve. So if you were going to put this into a, a homework, let's say that this was the first problem and then I had another problem I wanted to combine it with. Okay, so we have this is our problem statement and then here's our our uh, work here for, for the first problem and then let's say that our second problem here is on this reservoir analysis so I went through and I've done my kind of example calculation of what that would look like by hand here in the page and I used an app called cam scanner to scan this to one file one PDF by itself for this first problem and then the other one I scanned into a second one uh, those I have over in this folder that I can show you right quick here so problem one write up is done and then we have problem two and this kind of shows it uh, in the form of a PDF and so uh, if you if you have questions about how to make a PDF out of a document I could make a separate video about that but I'm assuming that once it's in handwritten form you know you can do that with an app called cam scanner that's what I use to, to make that and so anyway that shows how you can you know do a write-up let's go through some of the details of that uh, now so um, okay so here's the example and so for this problem what we're supposed to do is determine the mean annual minimum monthly flow calculations and so there's a couple of steps in that and so the first step is that we have to go come up with the annual minima time series for each month. And so to do that, basically, we have to look at the minimum flow from October 1 of one year to September 30th of the next year. And so that uh, we can take a look here at the spreadsheet. Um, for the first year here, we're looking at the minimum of these three values and then these nine. And so if you look at that, the minimum value actually occurs in the first month of 1.08. For the second year, it's 1.83. That's right here. So these three and out of these, these nine. Okay. So this shows the determination of the minimum value. Uh, this is something that's fairly straightforward to understand. So you probably wouldn't really need to do a write-up for that, but I went ahead and included it anyway, just to try to make it more clear. So... Um, I wrote out an explanation here of 1988, which is October 87 to September, just to, trying to explain the reasoning, put the minimum flow. You could also write out a sentence and do this in a Word document if you wanted to. Okay, and then again, I've said, see the spreadsheet that we just looked at for each subsequent year. So then the next step is to rank the annual minima from low to high, and then I've just said see spreadsheet for, for results. Okay, so there's really not a whole lot of work to show for that, but I've still written out what I did to kind of illustrate to whoever's grading this that I uh, understand that procedure. And so we can go back and look at the spreadsheet here. And so I took these values and I copied them down here below and uh, moved those into rank order. And then I've ranked them here 1 to 21. So that's kind of the next step here in our spreadsheet calculation. Okay, so you can go and see that. So if I was grading it, what I would want to be able to do, for me as the graders, I want to be able to read through these steps that you're doing and then immediately jump to the next page and see the results and then jump back to this page, go back and forth. So what I want to see in the homework is that you you have this part written out with your explanation and then the spreadsheet they need to be in subsequent pages before you go to the next problem which for this example is like the reservoir calculation that's that needs to happen after all the other ones are done okay so anyway uh, the next step then is to show an example of the calculation here so we've got the formula that we use n is the total number which was 21 and then or sorry that's yeah and then m is the um, rank of that particular value so for the first one m is one and this shows an example calculation and then from there you can go on and do the rest of them and again those are shown in the spreadsheet here first one is 22 the next one would be 11 when we go to 2 and then 22 over 3 is 7.33 
and so on. Okay, so that's the next uh, step. And then the last part is once we've done this, we have to go through and find where t equals 2.33 years. Okay, so I say C spreadsheet here for all results. Again, I'm trying to create a write-up here for the grader to follow through, and I tell him when to go look at the spreadsheet, him or her. Um, and then we go to the um, 2.33, we find that value, and uh, for 2.44, it's 1.49, 2.2, it's 1.56. means that for 2.33, it's got to be in between there, so it's about 1.5, maybe 1.52. And then I've also shown how you could do that with linear interpolation. So again, I don't want this video to focus on the details of how you do that, but I've shown that work here is the main thing, and then I can go see the result in the spreadsheet. Okay, so once I'm done with this, again, I can make it into a PDF, and I, I did that before now, and if you guys need instructions on how to make PDFs from a document, we can do that separately. Um, so now let's talk about how we can then take all this together and put it into one document. Okay, so we already have a PDF of this page. The next step then is going to be to um, create PDFs out of the Excel spreadsheets. Okay, so in looking at this, one way that you could do it is you could just do File, and then you can do Print, and then um, this default might be a printer here, okay, uh, or it could be on print to PDF. So this is what we're going to want to do. This will print the output into a PDF document. So if you just look at the default here, this is default in portrait, which means the long side is up and down, okay, and so this is going to cut this spreadsheet into three pages. Here's the first one, which really shows me part of one table and part of the second table. The second page here shows me part of the uh, second table, and then the third page shows me the rest part, rest of the first table. So this form is no good. This is not the way that it needs to be printed if for somebody to be able to understand, look at it, and understand what you did. So we have to rethink uh, how this is going to work. Okay. So the first, so really in going back uh, and looking at this, the easiest way to, for a person to be able to look at this and understand it is going to be to put it on two pages. What we want for the first page is going to be our minima time series calculation here. And I've put a nice bold underlined thing that somebody can use to that's grading it to quickly get to the information they need. Okay, or somebody that was reviewing this if it was an engineering calculation for a real company. Um, after you've done a print preview, you can see this dotted line here that shows the page breaks. And so this shows us how it's going to be on two pages. Okay, so one thing we can do here is we can go back to the print preview and we can uh, change it from portrait to landscape. So that's going to make the fat side of the paper left to right. Okay, but we still have this other table that's cut off. So really what I want to do here if I, to, is just to print all of this table on one page and then print all of this table here onto um, a different page. So you can do this in Excel if you just grab all the values you want to print like I did here. We go File, Print, all right. And now if you look down here, there is a uh, an option for Print Active Sheets. We can change that to Print Selection. And you see how it got rid of that last bit because we hadn't selected it. Uh, however, this is still on two pages, so this is going to be hard for somebody to follow. If I want to check this 1.08 or this 1.83, I want to be able to see the values here. So how am I going to do that? There's another option here called scaling, and you can do it uh, an option here to scale it down so that it fits on one sheet. Okay, so that would be one way to do it. There are other options here to make all the columns fit one sheet or all the rows. So if you have one that's really long, you might want to make all the uh, columns on one sheet. If it's really skinny and wide, you might want to make all the columns on one sheet. Anyway, those are different settings. You can look at them and, and understand what they do. So for this one, I'm just going to fit it on one page. And now, sure enough, this is going to be uh, exactly what we want for our first table. And so I'm going to go ahead then and hit print. And then it's going to ask me where to save it. And so I'm going to call this, this is the first problem on this kind of hypothetical homework. I'm going to call it the problem one, Excel one. Okay, for just my own name to understand what it is. So now what do we need to do? We need to go through and we need to print this second table off. So I'm going to grab all of this here, this selection, and I'm going to do file, print. And so you see it's still set up in landscape. So I want to go back to portrait 
because it's going to look better like that. And now we're on one page, and so uh, we're ready to go. And I hit print. And we're going to call this uh, problem one Excel, and that's going to be the second page of that. Okay. So now we have, if I go and uh, look at what we've created here, I've got the problem one write up here created as a PDF. And then I've got the first page of the Excel here that somebody can jump to. So what I'm going to want here is to go the write up, then the Excel first page, the Excel second page. And then we've got our uh, next problem here where I go over the reservoir calculation after that. So I want to have this in order of this will be my first page, then this one, then this one, and then that one. Okay, so I can put all these together using an online tool. There are lots of free ones out there. This one's called I Love PDF. Uh, it's free to use uh, with ads and whatnot. But so we'll go ahead and move over the problem one write up, then we'll do the problem one Excel, and then the problem one Excel the second page and then we'll do problem two. Hit the merge button and now it'll ask me where to download it and we'll just go ahead and download it into that same folder. So now I can go in and look at the merged document here and so imagine now that the grader is looking at this here's problem one, here's the problem statement, here's an example of the first thing I did, here's the spreadsheet for the next uh, page so I can jump down here to the page I can check the 1.08 and then I can go back and say okay that part was right now I go to the next one and it shows the return period calculation I can go here to this next table everything is neat and together and then I have problem two if you will that starts down here so this is how you can combine together um, both Excel and handwritten calculations into a single document and again on the homework what I want is problem one needs to be completely done before problem two starts problem two needs to be completely done before problem three and so on it needs to be in order all as one document I don't want to see the Excel spreadsheets we don't have time to go through and try to check every one of those calculations um, it's just a way for you to get to the answer more quickly and make sure that everything is neat and tidy and you don't have a bunch of extra pages and that things aren't split in half and that's up to you to try to figure out okay so hopefully this will help you uh, and doing the rest of your homeworks that you know to, to put it in this format so that it's easier for us to grade okay and this is exactly how you would do things in a real engineering design if you're creating something often as an engineer as a professional you're going to make a document other people are going to look at it you have to think about what it appears to them and you want it to look professional okay thanks